again, my name is Mike King. I'll be a, I'm a PLM application engineer for CATI. I've been doing this for a few years now. Before that, I've been using SolidWorks since about 2008. Uh, data management, I got into that about uh, 2010, the SolidWorks products back in the uh, EPDM days for any uh, long timers there. Um, and uh, recently, about four or five years ago, I got into uh, uh, solutions consulting uh, at CATI Inflow. So my whole goal is to get out and make sure that people understand the tools that we have and how they can make their lives better and help their teams run more efficiently and you know let them sleep better at night, I guess. So today we're actually gonna be talking about uh, building bill of materials in our SolidWorks data management tools. So we'll get it going into that. We're gonna start out in the bill of material options inside a PDM. So we'll do a couple slides about standard, PDM uh, or PDM standard, a couple things about PDM Pro, and then we'll actually go in and take a look at the SolidWorks Manage Bill of Material options. Um, we'll get a, dig into that and all the PLM-like features we have available to us in SolidWorks Manage um, that can really enhance our bill of material capabilities. If we have time, um, I, I'm going to go over some of the bill of materials that we, the tools that we have in each um, each option there in PDM and in Manage. Uh, so we'll try to sneak that in there at the end, but I also want to make sure that I leave some time for questions at the end to get anything answered that we need answered. So without any further ado here, let's go ahead and get this going. Number one, I, just to get a little groundwork going, where do we create our bill of materials? The big obvious one is, is SolidWorks and the CAD the package, right? So we have our drawings where we have our assembly drawings. And we have our assemblies where we have a bunch of parts making up bill of materials to create our, our product, to create our, our assemblies that get turned into bill of materials. That information can be fed into a PDM system, right? So we got PDM Pro, PDM Standard here that we could talk about. And this is where we might um, take our information from our SOLIDWORKS files, throw it into PDM, and allow us to have bill of material information that we can modify and export to make life really a lot easier. And then we also have manage. So manage is where we introduce some highly advanced capabilities for bill of material management and configuration management uh, that we're gonna dive into and take a look at. Um, just to give you a, an idea here, we're gonna spend most of the time, almost all the time in PDM and manage. I'm not gonna be doing a lot about uh, the SOLIDWORKS um, you know, CAD bill of material. We'll show it a little bit, but that's about it. Um, this is the PDM day. So we got to focus on PDM and manage here for this seminar. So first of all, you know, the big thing is SOLIDWORKS drawings. We have bill of materials embedded right on the face with our, you know, items called out, the balloons uh, called out for our different items, uh, where we have item numbers, part number, description, quantity showing up on the bill of material of the, you know, the drawings bill of material. Um, this is a great place to start. A lot of people are using this. Sometimes this is the gospel, right? You print this out. This now becomes my source of truth to build this, this uh, product. That's my engineering bill of material. That's great. That's fine. If that's how your business works and runs, perfect. That's how you should be doing things. Uh, there's other options, though. When we look at PDM, we can have a couple different options, which we'll go through today. And we have a way that we could take the information from our SOLIDWORKS files, SOLIDWORKS drawings, or even just create a bill of material and plug it into our PDM system so we have that collaboration capability within our PDM environment. A little more controlled, a little tighter uh, security, tighter uh, revision control and monitoring that we have going on there. Take another step further, we'll look at SOLIDWORKS Manage, where we can have bill of materials that are just bill of materials floating as a record that make up maybe parts, multiple parts, multiple assemblies, might even have items that are just records that represent bubble wrap or a cardboard box or grease that we don't have models for. And I can even have placeholders for my bill of materials and manage. Like I need to throw a new spec in here that's still not developed. We can throw that in there and have a placeholder until it's time to move that bill of material to production and throw the spec on there as needed. So we're gonna take a look at all these different options and make sure that uh, we know kind of what the deal is. Three ways to get to the same uh, result though, bill of materials. So start on PDM, we're gonna talk about SOLIDWORKS PDM. First couple ones here are gonna be both flavors of PDM. So we have our computed bomb that we'll talk about. You know, we gotta love the icons, right? We gotta have icons everywhere in PDM. So we'll make sure you understand the icon there. That's the computed bill of material. 
This is our SolidWorks bill of material. Um, that that's going to be one of our other options. And then we have our name bill of material, which shows us the, um, the little floppy disk. Right, the, uh, along with the computer bill of material symbol, and we'll go through each 1 of these that name bill of material being the PDM pro only option. So, computer bill of materials, this is the default bill of material type selected in PDM. So, when I select an assembly or a drawing of an assembly, I could go to my bill of materials tab, take a look at my computed bill of material that's there. It's part of the, the PDM system from, <clears throat> from the way it's set up. This is the most widely used one. PDM is going to display a bill of material of either the entire assembly or the, the assembly drawing of the assembly that's in it. Um, and it's going to just show you what's there. I mean, if we haven't modified it or done anything yet, it's going to just show up that way. This is the most widely used bill of material type, including PDM standard. Um, big thing about this is that it's going to reflect exclusions uh, made in SOLIDWORKS files. So if I exclude something from the bill, it's going to come up and pop up and, and have it that way. Um, if I need to add something like a consumable, like that drop of thread lock or grease or a piece of bubble wrap, I hope we're not modeling those. I'm not going to judge anybody here, uh, but I hope you're not modeling it. <laughs> um, so uh, drawing a dab of thread lock seems like a complete waste of time, but what we could do is have a file that represents that or a PDF that represents that, and we can add it as a reference and add it to the bill of material with a quantity for these computed bobs. So, one of the pieces here, though, that, that we can't do, we can't really check this in or out. This bill of material is connected to the file. It's represented computer bomb of the file. So there's no way to treat it as a separate entity. Okay, so we can't use a, a workflow to, you know, approve this bill of material, but it gets the job done 95% of the time. SolidWorks bombs. Um, this is where we can pick on a on a drawing, and if I go into my PDM system and I pick on a drawing here, if I go down to the bill of material view selector, you'll notice that I have an SLDDRW bill of material right here. What this is going to do, <clears throat> this is going to show us the bill of material table that's in our drawing. It's going to display that as our bill of material option inside of PDM. So. Earlier, I showed you that I took a little screenshot of it, so I didn't have the full thing here, but this bill of material where we were talking about down here, this could show up then as my bill of material in my PDM system. Couple, couple things about this, this is just gonna duplicate it. So if you have a bill of material that you've went in and modified and edited quantities, broken links to the parametric, uh, you've been <clears throat> added line items that aren't connected to anything, that's what's gonna show up in your PDM system. So be careful of that and leery of that. If we go and add, you know, a foot of wire or a drop of thread lock here, and we pull it into this bill of material, PDM's database doesn't know that. It's only going to show up on the, the uh, um, bill of material tab for that drawing file. It's just going to duplicate what's on the drawings bill of material table. All right. So be cautious of that. Know that that's one of those things that happens. If you did want to add something to it or take something away, you would do it in the drawing so that it would show up in that tab the correct way. That is dangerous, uh, but again, you know, I don't, I don't tell you that you can't take your, uh, you know, the the guard off your table saw to get the job done. So if that's how you have to get the job done, um, just know the consequences that could be there. The other piece of this is if we do have things that happen in here, we have changes that are made, the upstream and the parent assembly isn't gonna know that. The changes aren't gonna be visible to that upstream piece. Finally, and I should say, the SOLIDWORKS bomb is available in PDM standard and PDM professional. Uh, so that's those are the two options. We have the computed bomb and the SOLIDWORKS bomb inside of PDM standard. Inside of PDM Pro, we get, a, we get another one that we, uh, that I think is kind of underutilized, okay? This is the named bill of material. So this one is, is when I pick on a file I want, I could go to the middle right with the floppy disk and click on this, the, uh, the save as here, okay? What that's gonna do is my dropdown is now gonna have this dot .bom, okay? And that dot .bom is now a named bill of material inside the PDM system. 
what's nice about that is it's fully editable. This blue, fully blue uh, section here, this grid, lets me know that I can edit this and make changes to it. I can add lines that just represent things. That I can add a reference to a file, or I can add a line that's just a text line that isn't connected to anything, which could be helpful, could also be dangerous, right? We gotta be careful of how we're using it. Understand why we're using it and the way we're using it. Note that you also get this secondary menu that pops up, right? Uh, it would actually be be over here off to the off to the far right. Um, and what that does is we have the ability to check in, check out. Uh, we can switch this. That was weird. We can switch this uh, this view to where we can actually see just this bill of material as a file. Um, so it actually changes it to a file. So again, this is only a PDM Pro functionality. Um, we can add items to it that that might not be connected to something to to make, you know, to connect to, uh, or not to connect to, but to list out like a plastic bag or a, a piece of bubble wrap or a drop of thread lock. Um, if we do modify these lines, though, it's going to break the links to the parametric. So if I come in here, and I modify the description, the link to the parametric model where that description came from can now be is now broken. So we'd have to update that um, if something changed. We'd have to update this entire version. What's nice about this is that this turns the bill of material into a standalone file. And as such, we could check it in, check it out. We could have version history, and we could also push this through an approval process. So we can have a workflow that you know now um, controls our bill of materials that are named bill, bill of materials. This is the only one that we could control with a workflow in this way um, and treat as a separate file. So it's just another way we can utilize PDM Pro um, when we're dealing with our named or with our bill of materials. So the last piece here, this kind of just taken from the from the actual uh, description of it, but this saved computed, uh, it's saved from a computed bomb and it's treated like any other file in the vault, all right? So we can check it in, check it out. We can have the state change. And we can also have the version histories of whatever we need to do there. So all that information can be saved about the file, about the bill of material file. So of course, we need to go see this in action. I'll get out of PowerPoint for a minute. Um, go take a look at it inside the actual tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up a PDM vault here that I already have conveniently at where I need it to be so we don't have to go through folders and files. And I want to take a look at just a couple bomb options here. So in this case, pick on an assembly, go to my bill of material. Here's my simple bill of material. I can do the different things. Like I can have a secondary view of it for my computed bomb. So this is that one that works in standard or pro. And I can see, you know, different information that's available for uh, the different views I have set up for my groups. Um, I could, from here, I can actually modify this bill. So if I check this out, I'll hit check out and I can actually go to, let's go grab a file. Let's see what I got. I don't have anything in there. So let me go somewhere else here. Pick the wrong one. I can actually create um, a file. Let me make sure this is checked in. Scoot over in front of the other screen here so I can see it better. I can copy this file. <clears throat> so this is just a non-CAD. This is a Word file. I can copy that file, go back to my, um, my project there, which was in project two. Go into my CAD file. And that file that I was looking at, I can actually paste that Word file as a reference. Come in here and I, could, I have a couple options now. I could paste it as a reference only, or I can even add it to the bill of material with a quantity of four and hit OK. So when I do that now, and I'll hit, I'll hit save here. I'm sorry, check in. Is it a menu? Go ahead and check that in. And now I have my document as a reference that could be added to my bill of material with a quantity of four. 
So now that reference could be added and that computed bill of material. A computed bill of material could have that item added as a reference item to the bill of material. Also, if we go and take a look at some other options, let me grab my drawing here. I could come in and I see, let me have one. That, I have one that has it. There we go. So this is now my, when I select my drawing file, go down, select my drop down, and here's my SLD DRW bill of material. This is the bill of material that's on my drawing. So when I take a look at the preview of the drawing, here's my bill of material. I can make sure that this is the one that gets plugged into my bill of material in my view for PDM. So something I can switch back and forth to, or I can switch right back to my computed bomb like I want to. Now the other one, the big one here, um, let me get to the tank assembly. I have a named bill of material. So to do this, like I said, you come over and hit save, and that then adds this as the bill of material, the named one. Go in here, and I can actually check that out. That becomes fully editable. I've added in just a, a line item here. Okay, so what we could do, is I could hit insert below, and I could plug in a file, or I could come in here and say bubble wrap. Okay, put in a part number if I needed to, quantity of two. Okay, and then 12 by 12. Oops. Bubble sheet. Okay. And we can go ahead and save that. And when I do that now, I could I could see that it's been added to my bill of material in my named bill of material view here in PDM Pro only. And better yet, what I could do is actually uh, check that file in. I could make comments here, I could keep it checked out. But when I go and I switch views, I could see this bill of material, this named bomb is a file. Now, here's my file, and guess what I could do with it? I could turn this into, you know, send this into my workflow. I could see the file's history. So now I could control this named bill of material as a separate item. And obviously, when I need to make changes, I'd come back in, save a new version of it, update it, whatever I need to do, and then push it back through as a new version or a new revision. So named bill of materials, like I said, this is something that, um, isn't widely used I mean, when we talk to customers it's maybe one out of 10 one out of 15 that actually use this but it's something that could help your bill of material capabilities if you're just in pdm pro okay so i'm going to go ahead and get out of this we'll jump back into here next up we want to get into is solidworks manage we'll switch gears just a little bit i'm going to fly through this beginning part of it because i think about half of you were already on the previous one about an hour ago uh, SolidWorks manages an advanced product data management tool, it extends our capabilities of SolidWorks PDM. Um, we can account for project timelines. We have the ability to monitor assignments and tasks um, and different things like that. We have flexible item management, which is exactly what we're showing here with the bill of materials. And we have the abilities to see dashboards and reports, which we'll take a look at a report for bill of materials, but we'll look at um, some of that information on how we can utilize it with bill of materials. Again, we can use this leveraging the existing data and making sure that we stay within our regulatory requirements and industry standards. In the four pillars of manage, we're going to be focusing primarily on this bill of materials and records piece. Looks like this when we look at all the different capabilities of features, key features that manage has. If you see something on here that interests you, let me know. I'd love to chat with you about manage. And that's all my sales pitch right there in that two minutes. So if we take a look at manage bill of materials, we actually introduce a little bit more capability here than we have in PDM and in SolidWorks alone. SolidWorks has this as a whole different approach because we introduce the concept of items. So items, we can do some very interesting and complex things with bill of materials. We can have some complex bill of materials that allow us to interact with different parts of our teams, maybe even a new product development or engineering change management so that we can have this centralized system to easily create, edit, and compare bill of materials for all the different stages of the manufacturing process. And I'm even gonna say the engineering process. So we're gonna look through a couple of different ones and manage. We're talking about project or a new product development bill of materials. We'll jump into EC management with bombs. 
I, I keep saying bombs. We're going to end up on some kind of list here. Bill of materials. Uh, turn off all your smart speakers, you know, so you're not uh, just screaming out bombs all the time. Um, but we can actually take a look with our engineering change management at including bill of materials for markup. So manage is going to give us the capability that we'll take a look at here in a minute to, to actually have markups of the bill of material that travel with the process. No more messing around in Excel. No more messing around outside in a separate system. We could connect it right to our PDM data and manage. Another thing with that EC management, since we can treat a bomb a bill of material like a record, we can actually utilize our change management processes to control those records. So we can have bill of materials going through our engineering change process and our approval processes just the same. We'll have some bill of material in PDM showing the bill of material options we have in manage and how they show up in PDM. And then we'll talk about exporting and reporting on the bill of materials inside of manage and how we can utilize that. So first of all, project bill of materials. This can be a part of a project. So we could have a project right inside of manage. And you see this tab right here. Whoops. See this? <laughs> Let me get to it. Right here, a bill of materials. That's going to allow us to have a bill of material be tracked through our entire project, our entire development of a project. We could have multiple variants inside of even the project. So we could have a bill of material for the United States and a bill of material for the European Union. Maybe that's CE certified one there. Um, and have that um, basically be living with the, this project as it's going through its life cycle. And the engineering change management side, all of our bill of materials, I'm sorry, all of our EC records, like our change orders, can now include the markup of the bill of material um, right inside the, uh, the process. So we have a bill of material tab um, inside of the EC management record that has our information about marking up the bill of material. So we can put the disposition, modify, add, remove, whatever, uh, delete all that good stuff right here in the markup. And because we have these as a standalone record, the bill of material can be its own record. We can have a bill of material of a kit. We can have a bill of material of a bunch of drawings that are making up a final skew, a sellable skew. And we can have a process that controls those record based bill of materials. So we could utilize our change management system to control our bill of materials right out of the gate. Like I said, these bill of materials are records, so I can have a record that is a kit. And I can have different types, kits, shipping, standard, you know, all these different ones that have different variants um, to find those and different filters for those. Um, if you notice here, I have variants that could include uh, geographical regions. So maybe for part availability or supplier availability, that's true, but it doesn't stop there. I could have catalog variants. I could have customer specific variants or, you know, whatever you could think of for bomb variants, we could plug into manage and have it control our bill of materials um, really as, as a standalone record. So think about what you could do with that. Um, if it wasn't just tied, you know, to a single CAD assembly, we have a lot more flexibility there. And then kind of this other piece here with, with it should say, the manage bomb in PDM. That's what I should have put there. In PDM, when I go to the SolidWorks Manage tab and look at it there, I can see the bill of material and all the variants right on my SolidWorks Manage tab inside of PDM. Notice I have my manufacturing bomb from within PDM now. So that allows me to have that more complex bill of material structure even in my PDM side. And when we come over, we can see the SolidWorks bomb, we can see the manufacturing bomb, everything is there. Finally, the exporting and reporting on this, we could create reports and run reports against our bill of materials. So I could have this report that shows all the information and have a multi-level bill of material. Um, I could include things like barcodes, uh, different things like that, so that when we use them downstream, um, we could we could use those for shipping, right? We could scan it off and have it pull it out of shipping. Whatever we need to do, 
that barcode could drive information for us. So these reports are, are very um, highly customized and they could do a ton of work and a ton of legwork for us if we let them. Um, another cool thing about this is if we utilize a process or even right click, we can actually export our XML files uh, to our ERP system. So we can have structured XML based on templates that we include and manage and right click or using a process, kick it out and have it create XML that gets imported into our ERP system. Real quick, I wanna show, show you uh, some of the stuff in manage um, and I'll try to get through it. I, I'm at 26 minutes right now and I just need a couple more. Um, we'll go ahead and get this VM kicked up here. So my manage VM. I'm going to start out in one of my records because I, I want to show you um, actually the uh, the engineering change notice bomb or the engineering change order bomb. Come into here. Let's grab this one. Let's see if I got one. Here we go. So inside of my engineering change order, which I'll open that up. I have all my affected files, all that good stuff, but I also have. So here's all my affected items for my bill of material that's actually controlling the PDM system. So some pretty cool stuff there. If you guys want to see more, let me know. I'd love to show you that sometime. Uh, but these affected items get added uh, to the bill of, to the engineering change, and we can utilize those same things to build out the bill of material and say, add, remove, modify, maybe change the quantity, add comments, or add a new line and whatever we need to do. So we can actually have this marked up bill of material, follow the engineering change order all the way through the process. So it stays right with it, okay? Um, another piece of this, if I go to my documents and records, and I'm gonna pick on one of those record-based bill of materials. I'll select this one right here. Uh, you know what? Let's do a different one. How about this one? If you look at this, I have a good bill of material going on here. I have items that are part of the assembly, items that I created that are just records like thread lock, bubble wrap, things that don't need models or drawings. And also I have a line that I, this is what I showed earlier that I need to add some new spec sheet to this. What I could do for this is I could actually send this to a process. So I could take this bill of material, which it's just a, standalone bill of material of a sellable SKU for this kit and actually send this and request a change or send it directly to a change order. So that allows me to utilize my already established change management and, and run it that way. Okay, if we look at our projects, very quickly, we have bill of materials inside of our projects. I can have a bill of material that follows this project all the way through. Maybe it's information I need to that gets updated at every stage of the project. That's okay. Maybe it's line items that for things that need to be built in the project and released. That's okay too. Okay. When I go back to this documents and records, I could create those filters like we said. We're gonna have shipping bombs, standard bombs, or just show me all my bombs. Bill of materials there. Um, you know, we can edit those right directly from there. I'm gonna hold off on that because we got about two minutes left here. And the other piece of this is that we can run a report. So from here, I'm actually going to grab this one, and I can run my report against this. Okay, we'll hit view. This is going to create that report, and I could do this on demand, or I can have it set to happen, you know, through a process. Maybe my bill of material release process. I could have this this sheet, this report created to be sent downstream. Another cool piece of this, I can very quickly come in and go to tools, send this to my uh, ERP system, or what I do here is actually I can uh, export, let's do this, export my information to Excel. Obviously, I have a hard time clicking and talking at the same time. Sorry about that. Click that. Open that file up. And now here's our bill of materials that we could, you know, go and see this as a as a single one or all of them at the same time. Using that illegal Excel there. Whoops. Um, next thing. So this is kind of how we would do our bill of material piece. 
and before I get out of here, I'm going to go into the compare tool because I don't want to miss out on that. <clears throat> but if I look at a bill of material, let me open that up. And we take a look at the bill of material. And I look at the tools, I have some compare options. So I can actually compare versions of the bill of material against each other. So let's take A to B and we'll say compare. It's going to show us a nice little compare against the two and I can export that to Excel and use that externally if I need to. So this compare functionality also lets me uh, go in and compare it against other kits or other part numbers or other bill of materials that I need to look at. It's not just the same file with different versions. It's other files to compare against. Maybe I have the same part in multiple kits. Okay, something like that. Um, the other thing is within PDM, you open that back up. When we look at bill of materials, we still have that option to look at those bill of materials. So let's go to one here and we can actually do a compare and we can look at versions across here to each other here and see the different compares against those. So we have compare in both, right? We could do that in both. And we can see the color chart down here, the legend that says here's the new modified or deleted. This is a new item that we just added compared to the last one. So this ability here to compare and to even uh, export this compare into Excel and PDM, we can also export it to Excel inside of Manage. So now I have a usable Excel CSV file that I could use in other areas to show the compare. All right, so that was the that was the tools. I kind of ran through those tools, so I wanted to get them in there at the end. I apologize for kind of blasting through those so quickly.